So now I'll get into uh, GDB. Um, so this is just a quick uh, GDB primer. Um, GDB is the GNU debugger for uh, uh, debugging the programs. Um, and I found it really useful. There's also a command line uh, tool that's available on your host, uh, which is DDD, but uh, I wasn't able to configure it to run uh, cross-platform. Um, but um, so the way you use GDB is uh, you say GDB followed by the binary. And generally, when you compile the code, you set a dash G GDB option. So it actually loads debugging symbols into your executable. So when you debug, you can actually put breakpoints and function names, using function names and things like that. Um, and there's also uh, a way to pass an initial set of commands. So every time you debug, let's say you always want to see what's in registers R0 through R12 or whatever, uh, for any reason. So you can pass this uh, initial commands file using the dash x option. Um, and it will run that those set of instructions for you at the beginning of uh, when you start GDB with the binary. Uh, and for help, you can always type help. Um, and to actually start, uh, what GDB binary does is it just loads the program uh, and prepares it for uh, debugging. But when you actually say run is when it starts running. And if you have any command line arguments that you want to pass, you just pass it to the run command. So you say run followed by rv. So this is a. Uh, possible set of initial commands that you guys can create in your emulator. Um, and this just uh, prints 10 instructions ahead of where it's executing. And it prints like R0 through R11, the stack pointer, and the CPSR. So you guys can use that. And uh, put the breakpoints uh, in GDB, you just say B, uh, B for breakpoint followed by the function name. And if you want to break at a specific address, you put an asterisk before, the, uh, before you specify the address. You can specify it in hex. Um, and then you also have branch with file name, colon, line number, uh, if you actually have multiple files. Uh, and then breakpoint with a line number, so it will accept a line number. If you actually type list, it will list the program out for you and the line number, and you can choose the line number. Um, then there is also info B will show you what breakpoints you've set. Uh, and to remove the breakpoint, you either you have to go back to using the same uh, notation as here, and you can say clear followed by the function name or clear followed by the instruction address using an asterisk and so on and so forth. So if you want to do, if you want to remove a breakpoint, you first do it in FOB, see where the breakpoints are, and then clear them. Um, similarly, uh, to display or look at uh, memory contents, you use uh, the X or examine command. And so the examine command actually takes a format string. So if I want to uh, look at a particular memory location, uh, and I want to look at 32 words in hex. Uh, this is how I would do it. So this says, look at 32 count uh, in hex, hexadecimal, print the values in hexadecimal, uh, and print them a word at a time. And I'll show you more examples of this uh, in a little bit. Um, this uh, disassemble is very useful. Uh, if you have shared libraries or libraries in uh, uh, memory, and you want to look at uh, the assembly code for those functions, you could say disaf and uh, followed by the function name, and it'll disassemble your function and show you the assembly code. Uh, again, to see breakpoints, you do info breakpoints. Similarly, you can also look at registers. So if you want to print out all the registers and look at the values, you say info reg, it'll print out all the registers. And if you want to step one line at a time, you say step I or SI for short. Um, and if you want to continue till the next breakpoint, you just say C. Uh, BT will print a backtrace of all the methods that uh, you've called through. Um, so this is like a brief intro to GDB. You guys should be familiar with it. Do uh, you have any questions? I'm sorry, just I missed it. The, the 
you want to break on a specific instruction address, that, that's the asterisk just indicates it's a, it's a memory, memory location. location. Okay. And uh, you, you'll actually use it a lot for your hijack lab. This is uh, the Bob lab. So this is actually uh, a binary that's been given to you in uh, project slash uh, it's Bob lab. So, and your job is to defuse the bomb. So uh, if you haven't heard of this before, uh, all it is is you have to provide each phase with a specific input um, to diffuse that phase. And to figure out what that input has to be, you have to debug, essentially, and figure out what is the correct input to diffuse the phase. Um, so the first thing I would recommend is actually to put a breakpoint on explode bomb. Because that's what gets, gets called if you input the wrong code for each phase. Uh, and so it, it will prevent it from um, exploding. So Dr. Evil has uh, prepared uh, this bomb, which is binary, and the uh, job is to dis uh, disable the bomb. And uh, so the way you would start debugging the bomb is you just say gdb x uh, with your initial commands file and followed by the bomb. So um, you can also put a breakpoint on explode bomb. And to disassemble the first phase, you would say dis uh, disassemble phase under bar 1. So each of the phases is actually labeled uh, pretty easily. So uh, it has all the debugging symbols in there. So you can say phase under bar 1, phase under bar 2. Um, and info reg is also useful to see all the registers. But if you have that initial commands file, it will keep outputting 10 instructions at a time every time you step. Um, and if you want to scroll up and down inside that terminal screen, um, you can use shift page up, shift page down to scroll. You know, sometimes it's hard. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there are two bombs uh, for your uh, fun and pleasure. So you can choose whichever one you want and have at it. So they're, uh, they've been randomized, so there are different uh, phases that stand for different pieces of assemblies. So, um, they have different strings. If we look at the C code, will it give us the answer? No. Actually, the C code, all it does is, is it calls the phases. So. Okay. Okay. I don't think you'll have the phase code. That's what's needed. And you actually also have tab completion in GDB. So if you just type explode to tab, it will finish the function for you. The other thing you could do is uh, put, put all your answers to each phase in a text file and then feed it in when you say run. You can do a less than and uh, do a redirect uh, cat. Or you can actually say run with the file name. Sorry. So I just want to highlight to you guys the uh, arm and, um, instruction set manual uh, that's also included in your references on the VM. So it's a great resource. So if you go look in uh, ARM references, so it has the ARM architecture manual. So let's say I want to find TBB. Do a find. Actually, you get to this table branch. Click on this. Uh, one byte. Let's 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 And uh, the Cortex A9 technical reference is a slightly older version of the same manner. That keeps changing, but it's And uh, this folder also has your ATPCS, uh, so the arm thumb procedure call standard uh, document. So this sort of goes through all the different uh, register notations. Also, sort of the least significant bit being set for uh, some mode for the address. 
So section 5.1 is the place where it actually says uh, use the branch and exchange instruction branch to a destination and simultaneously change instruction set to that specified by the least significant bit of the destination address. So basically that means your address, uh, you specify it uh, by setting the least significant bit or thumb or uh, leave it at zero or R. When you use DXLR, it changes to the appropriate uh, set. And this is actually used when you're doing error working where you have combined arm and thumb. Right now, everything that you're using is all in thumb. thumb mode. Another way to format your examine output is uh, actually, so when you say 32XW, what that means is show me 32 hexadecimal words uh, starting at this memory location. Uh, similarly, you can say slash 5S, and it would show you five strings at that memory location. Or you can also say slash 10i to show 10 instructions. So if you're looking at instruction memory and you want to see the opcodes or whatever, or decode the opcodes at a particular memory location, the slash 10i is pretty useful. Uh, actually, we had this uh, here. So we're using it with display, but part of the initial commands font that you can put in uh, to a file. And it'll always display 10 instructions for you. I was hoping Raspberry Pi would have come out by the time I taught this class and I could do it on bare metal. So oh. It would have been 25 bucks a pop. <laughs> nice. But I encourage you guys to go ahead and buy those Raspberry Pis. <laughs> Try these out. If I can. Uh, so Raspberry Pi, there's a foundation called Raspberry Pi Foundation. Oh. Uh, so they sell these, uh, I believe those are uh, Cortex profile also. Uh, but they're just the entire system on chip. They have USB, HDMI, all of this built in on, on the board. Mm. Uh, there are some other boards that are available that you can use also, like a uh, Panda board and a Beagle board. You get those for about uh, 180 to 200 bucks uh, with all the peripherals and everything. So they have like multiple USB ports, HDMI. They actually come with uh, the Panda board, for example. I just bought it recently. Uh, has uh, two Cortex uh, A9. Uh, it's a dual Cortex, uh, dual core Cortex A9, and it has two Cortex M3 processors also embedded on the same board. And so it's using all the peripherals essentially to. Uh, you know, uh, do video processing and things like that for HDMI. Um, you also, it also has USB ports and uh, an Ethernet port. So you can run a server on one of these things if you wanted to. It's really useful. So a lot of the questions I got in my other class were related to more the microcontroller side of R, which is sort of different from the Cortex A profile. So this is the actual yeah, website for Lenaro, uh, and this has a bunch of companies that are down here at the bottom, like ARM, Freescale, IBM, Samsung. Uh, they're trying to encourage open source development on these ARM platforms. So. And if you go to their download section, you can actually get uh, all the Ubuntu images, which is what I'm running um, on the emulator. Uh, you can also get Android to run. And uh, these are all the boards that are available. Uh, you can even run uh, Analinux. You know. They have a developer image also if you want. So, they also have all the tool chains like GCC and stuff for compiling for R. So the other websites that are useful is actually um, 
So Mentor Embedded has a website that sells, um, they actually have a light edition which gives you cross compiler tools called uh, Code Sorcery. So if you wanted to cross compile for the emulator, you could use uh, these cross compilers. You can download the light edition, and uh, when you use a tool set, uh, you use the GNU Linux EABI toolchain uh, for cross compiling for the emulator. It's This is the actual panda board. Some bare metal font. 